This video is about Amazon sponsored sales attribution. You will learn how to understand it in order to read uh, Amazon advertising data correctly. Also, we will talk about Amazon attribution beta, which helps to get additional metrics for sellers who are advertising off Amazon. Our guest today is Tarek from M19 company. M19 is a software to, which helps to optimize Amazon advertising campaigns. If you would like to try this software and see what they do, you'll find the link below in the description. And the host of this video is Lisa Lee. She works with different Amazon brands. And as always, if you would like to receive notification about the videos we upload, where we talk with different Amazon brands, uh, Amazon experts, Amazon softwares, don't forget to subscribe below, click the notification bell as well. Hi Tarek, it's great to have you here. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do uh, in the Amazon space? Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Tarek, co-founder of M19. M19 is a, a software based on AI to manage uh, PPC on, uh, on Amazon. So basically we cover all the ad formats, sponsor products, brand and display. And the goal is to provide a platform where it's easy, simple to configure strategies and the tool using machine learning and AI will be putting this in place uh, for you, creating the campaigns, doing the keyword extraction, the bidding, et cetera, and optimizing everything. So the goal is to improve uh, performance, to not lose time in uh, optimization and configuration, and have a dashboard that is simple uh, and easy to use. And myself, I'm one of the five co-founders and I'm in charge of the machine learning and data part. Okay, very cool. So today we have one interesting topic, uh, which might sound a little bit confusing at first, but we are going to talk about two different things that uh, are kind of similar as well. So we talk about Amazon attribution beta and Amazon sponsored sales attribution. So I know you have a slide deck for us uh, to better explain everything. So let's go into that uh, first, and then we have some question and answer session as well. Yeah, exactly. Today we'll be covering uh, Amazon sponsored sales attribution and I will be showing you uh, briefly what's the difference with the program uh, Amazon attribution beta. So first thing, the sponsored sales that are reported on Seller Central uh, or on the advertising console are all based on what uh, I will be describing here. So when there is a sponsored sales uh, reported, either uh, what we call one day, seven day, 30 day, or whatever, all these metrics, the ACOS also that is displayed on the advertising console is based on this principle. So this is why it's really important to understand the basic of it, because all the numbers in the advertising console that are linked to sales are directly linked to this principle. So the easiest way I found to describe it is with an example. Let's consider a user timeline, a user journey in, uh, on the Amazon uh, website. So we, for example, as a user, you can go to Amazon and you want to search, you are looking for earbuds. So you type earbuds, then you have a bunch of different products that will be displayed on the search result page. One of the uh, slots that is uh, sponsored can be the product that I'm showing here in the slide, these earbuds from the brand OK. So let's assume the user will click on this uh, product that is there in a sponsored position, in, in sponsored uh, slot. Then a couple of days or uh, hours after, this same user, he dropped, he went doing, uh, he went doing uh, other things, and he came back to Amazon. And for some reason, he is now looking at the storefront of this same brand, OK. The brand is called OK. It's a Chinese uh, uh, electronic brand that is making good products. So the user is now on the store storefront of this brand, and he, sh he saw uh, a webcam, like a camera from the same brand. So he clicks on this product. It's, it's an organic click because we are on the storefront. It's not sponsored. He will land 
on the product page of this uh, camera and you will buy it. So here we described a journey. It can take one day, three, four, five, or up to 30 days, depending on the metric we will be looking at. And what will be reported on the advertising report is as follows. This is the, the very basic and simple way of reporting it. For the earbuds product that, is, that costs $30, the price of these earbuds, for example, in the reports, we will see reported one, $1 in advertising cost because of this sponsored click that we saw uh, in the beginning of the journey. And sponsored sales, let's say sponsored sales on a seven-day matching window. These matching me windows are the windows between the sponsored click and the sale that will happen in the future. It can be on the same ASIN that has clicked or not. Amazon is reporting all sales happening on a user session independently from is it the product that has been clicked or not. In the example that we saw, the, the user didn't buy the earbuds, but both the web, webcam, the camera. So the first thing that is tricky here is that the sponsored sale that will be reported are the ones and are related to the amount of the real purchase that is not the product that has been clicked. So when we will be looking at the PPC reports, we will see $50 reported in sponsored sales, even if it's $30, the price of the earbuds. And when we look at the total sales report, like uh, the uh, revenue report, the business report, Per ASIN, if we look at uh, it for the earbuds, we will see zero dollars because this is not the product that has been uh, purchased at the end. And when we look at the data for the camera, it's the other way around. So we won't see the advertising costs linked to the click we saw before because it's not the product that has been uh, clicked. So we didn't pay uh, for this advertising the sponsored sale will be at zero. We won't report a sponsored sale to the camera, even if it was the camera that has been bought. But when we'll, we will be looking at the business report and total sales per ASIN for the camera, we will find here the $50 of this uh, transaction. So you can see that the click happened on the earbuds, the cost is linked to the earbuds that has been clicked. And the sponsored sales are linked to the earbuds that has been clicked but didn't, uh, uh, weren't bought, but it's another product with the price of the other product. And to find this number, we will find it in the business report in the total revenue per ASIN. So, if we push it even further, this same example, when we will be looking at metrics like ACOS, we will find that the earbuds ACOS will be low and lower than what it should be because we are reporting a sale that is for a product that is more expensive than the earbuds. So it can be even uh, trickier because we are reporting sales that are higher than the average price of the product that has been promoted. And plus, it's not even the product that has been bought. And when we look at the total ACOS, total ACOS, it's basically uh, the, uh, the same thing as the ACOS, but looking at total sales and not only sponsored sales. It's cost over total sales, organic and sponsored. And ACOS is cost over sponsored sales. So the ACOS for earbuds will be low and the total ACOS for earbuds, if, when we look at it at ASIN level, will be high. And here, total ACOS is high because the cost is linked to the earbuds and total sales are not linked to the earbuds, which is good and bad. Good because the cost is attributed to the earbuds because the clicks happened there, but the sales not. Uh, 
And the camera, if we look at the A cost for the camera, the A cost will be high because, uh, the, the, because the sponsored sales are not reported to the camera and the total A cost will be low. So the limit here that we are seeing is when sales are not happening on the same product that has been clicked or for which we have spent uh, PPC, ACOS can be misleading because the ACOS, when we look at it at ASIN level, it doesn't take into account cross-selling between product. When a product gets clicked and it's another product that has been bought. And the ACOS will capture this sponsored sales even if they didn't happen on the product that has been clicked. So the first question uh, that you might have is, okay, so if we are not reporting sponsored sales for the ASIN that has been clicked, why don't we build an ACOS metric based on sponsored sales, same SKU? And we will consider only sales that will happen on the product that has been clicked. This can be a solution, but the, in, the bad thing about it is even when we have a click on a product that won't be bought at the end, and it's another one that has been bought, if we ignore this transaction, we don't take it into account in a sponsored sales, it means that we ignore the, the effect and the impact and the help of a product being sponsored that is helping sales for another product. So we won't be solving the problem by only considering same SKU sponsored sales. So one way of mitigating this issue is avoiding looking at ACOS at product level, but looking at ACOS at group of products level. So, so, uh, so as when there are cross-selling, cross-selling between products, everything will be taken into account and we won't uh, be considering some ASIN that has clicks and other that has getting sales. So looking at ACOS and total ACOS at group of products or at account, this will minimize that type of effects. These metrics, uh, as I told you, like the, the, uh, all the metrics that are displayed in the advertising console are not same SKU, so you cannot do anything with it. But if you want to push your analysis further and know exactly what's happening with your VPC, data is available uh, and it's public in, <laughs> in the advertising reports. As you can see here uh, in my slide, you just need to go fetch search term report, for example, for sponsored products. And then you will see that in the columns that you will get in the spreadsheet that you will download, you will see uh, four specific columns that can be interesting to, to study uh, this uh, thing is the first one is the advertised ASIN. So you will, be, you will be fixed which product that has been advertised and that got a sponsored click and sponsored, so uh, an advertising expense. Then you have the seven day total sales. So this will count, will take into account same SKU and other SKU, everything. This is the, the sponsored sales that you will be showing displayed, that will be displayed on the advertising console. And the two other ones that are not on the, advertise, on the advertising console are the seven day advertised SKU sales and seven day other SKU sales. So the first one, seven day advertised SKU sales, is the amount of the transaction that happens when a user click on a product and will buy the same product. So this is the, the, the metric you want to be uh, looking at if you want to study what is the share of your same SKU uh, sales happening on your PPC. And the other one is the rest from the total uh, sponsored sales. One easy way to study it is just uh, computing the share of sponsored sales same SKU using the formula that I just showed, that I'm showing here. Seven day advertised SKU sales over seven day total sales. You do this for every one of your ASIN and you will have a number from zero to 100% 
to know what's the share of same skew cells that are happening on a specific ASIN. The higher it is, uh, it will, means, will mean that when you sponsor this product, chances are very high that sale will happen on this same uh, product. And now let me uh, show you what is the difference between Amazon sponsored sales uh, matching and the Amazon uh, uh, attribution uh, beta uh, system. So it's almost the same principle. We are always at the end. We are interested in a sale that will happen on Amazon. This is the, the same thing between the two. We have a sale that will happen and we want to attribute this sale either to an action on Amazon, to a click, a sponsored click. So this is basically the, what I was describing in my previous slides. So you are just attributing to the last sponsored click. This is sponsored sales attribution. And for the Amazon attribution is when you are running Google ads or Facebook ads or other social ads, you want to know which channel is, is helping to generate sales on your product on Amazon. So for the same example, if we consider that the user journey starts on Google and you are running, running some search ads on Google, so some, someone is looking for earbuds on Google, he, this user will click on a, a Google ad that you are running on this specific product, he will land on Amazon, then he will be uh, browsing on Amazon, then leaving Amazon, going on to his, in his social feed. You are running some display ads on Facebook on this same uh, product, and he will click on his Facebook uh, feed on the product that you are promoting on Facebook, and he will land again on Amazon and he will make the purchase. So Amazon attribution is, is there to show you which channel did help or at least lead to the transaction. For the last event click attribution, you will see that it's Facebook that will have the sale attributed to it. And this way, you will know that Facebook with when you are spending, I don't know which amount of dollars, it's at least helping you uh, get this amount of sales on Amazon. So basically, the Amazon attribution uh, beta program is the ability to attribute sales happening on, on Amazon and distribute them across the other advertising channels that you might be uh, have in parallel to uh, Amazon advertising. And this is the, the basically uh, the main difference between these two. So I think this was uh, helpful for you. And if there is, if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to reach directly to me uh, by email. Thank you so much. I really like the examples you brought because it's much easier to follow along when you have uh, examples in front of your eyes, especially that there, there are a lot of details. So uh, if we talk about sponsored sales attribution, what's the time frame? Uh, is it different by the ad type from the click uh, to the sale? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't mention that, but you are right uh, for uh, sponsored brand. I think the time frame is 14 uh, days uh, and sponsored product, you have different metrics. You have one day, seven day, I think, and 30 days. And if I'm not mistaken, the one reported in the advertising console, uh, it's seven day, I think, for sponsored products. I don't know, sponsor uh, seven days or 14 days. But it's okay, not so one day, it's not 30 days. Okay, so they are different. But what does it mean for sellers that there are different time frames? Like, does it... Um influence the time frame of optimizations like yeah. how often sellers should do the optimization process yeah, yeah it's very important also it's important to keep that in mind because when you know that sales attribution is 
it's seven day that is reported by at least seven days or, or 14 days, depending on the formats. You know that when you are spending a dollar today, you might see uh, a sale uh, attributed to this dollar three or four days after, which means that on the last, uh, last seven days, you might have some extra sales that will be uh, added. So keep in mind, and this depends uh, a lot on the categories. We have the, some categories where most 99% of the sales are happening during the first 12 hours and other where, for example, where products are more expensive, people need more time, and the average uh, time between search click and sale is uh, longer. So depending on your category, you need to keep in mind that there's always a delay between the click and sponsored sales. So when you are analyzing, uh, try to uh, avoid the very fresh, the freshest and the, the latest data. Uh, and keep in mind that it might be better, a cost might lower because of some late reported sales. And sometimes even Amazon is reporting, uh, is having delay reporting sales because when sometimes they have a peak or, or, of traffic on their servers, they might have a delay of two, three, or four, up to six hours compared to the average, just depending on some technical reasons on their side. This is on top of the fact that this attribution is introducing uh, a by design uh, delay between when you are looking at the cost that is happening hour after, after hour, we know there has been a click, it will cost you X. Uh, but sales, it will take uh, more time. So uh, always try to ignore at least current and previous day when you are doing adjustments and optimizations. Okay, would you say it's safe to go like, let's say if I would like to analyze today, I go back like, I don't know, five to seven days then? So um, the, we did a, a lot of studies uh, on this topic on uh, M19s. And what we saw is it's the same thing over all the categories. As I said, the distribution will differ uh, for the sale, the, the, the time frame between the click and the sale. But after the first 36 hours, most of the sales are already, uh, already uh, happened. So if you want to be super safe, you just need to skip the last 48 hours. And you won't be missing a lot of uh, sales because uh, there are very few sales that are happening uh, after 48 uh, hours. I don't think uh, that you need to, to skip uh, four or five days. 48 okay. hours is, uh, is enough. Okay, that's very good information because I think a lot of sellers um, have this information of waiting like a week or so, uh, which could be quite crucial, especially like during the launch periods or uh, promotion periods. So it's very good information. So if we now, uh, yeah, you wanted to add something? Yeah, no, uh, it's, um, I can understand why they have this in mind for the waiting for seven days because there might be some sales coming, but the probability is low. The share in average of sales happening after five, six or seven days is very low. We are talking about between one and 3% uh, of sales. So it will have a limited impact on the ACOS. So the trade-off between waiting so long for the precision that it, you will take from it is not worth it. So there's no need to wait uh, for uh, for so long in my opinion okay okay very cool i really like your in-depth replies and answers uh, i think it's very easy to understand your explanations even if it's uh, a beginner seller listening to us so i wanted to now jump to amazon uh, attribution beta so why should even amazon sellers want to drive traffic uh, from outside of amazon to amazon <laughs> this is a very good question. Uh, so basically, you want to do that because when you have external uh, campaigns running, you will drive external traffic. When you will get sponsored click on these ads, uh, you will drive external traffic. And Amazon loves it because you are bringing users outside, from, outside of Amazon into Amazon because of uh, your ads. So this will help. Uh, your organic uh, rank uh, because you are uh, bringing external traffic, which makes uh, 
a lot of sense because Amazon is, you are bringing users to them. They, that will, might buy your product or other products on the Amazon platform. And this is basically why they love it and why they give you um, a push into your uh, organic. The second thing is um, wh why would I better pay uh, ads outside Amazon and then pay again ads, uh, the commission for the transaction on Amazon and not uh, uh, redirect user directly to my own Shopify if I have one where the commission is lower. And the, the reason for that is Amazon is um, a, a super optimized platform for uh, conversion. So in Amazon, you, people have already their credit card registered. It can be just one or two clicks to uh, finalize uh, the purchase. Plus, people and users trust Amazon compared to your uh, own Shopify. So first thing is it might be easier for a user uh, to uh, convert and buy on Amazon compared to your web website because it's just better designed. And plus, you have this um, trust factor where users might trust more uh, Amazon and put their credit card on a, on, on a, on a website like Amazon rather than uh, on an unknown website like your uh, Shopify. And of course, if these guys are uh, don't like Amazon, yeah, in this case, you are screwed and <laughs> you would have, as you pay for this uh, Google or Facebook clicks and they will jump out of your product page because they don't want to to buy on Amazon. Okay, but um, in your opinion or in your experience, uh, where do Amazon sellers usually drive their traffic to? Is it uh, directly to the product detail page or is it rather through, let's say, the storefront page? Um, it, it depends on what they are trying to uh, achieve. If you are uh, really looking for uh, conversion and optimizing for profits and conversion, yes, you need to drive directly to your product page. If you are uh, looking for awareness, uh, promoting your brand, uh, and you are more looking for uh, views, etc., you the, in this case it makes sense to drive to the storefront. But I think for most uh, of the of the sellers it's more relevant to drive uh, to the product detail page uh, unless you have a, a, a brand that is super niche and specific on, 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 a, on, a, on a given category of product and driving to your storefront is kind of driving to your product detail page because you have only super similar products and the user will be directly in this um, uh, in, in your ecosystem around the product uh, that you are selling. Okay, cool. So do you want to add anything else about either of these two attributions or uh, we, we covered all the basics there is to, to talk about, about these things? Um, yeah, I just want to um, focus uh, on, on a very basic thing uh, that uh, I was surprised to see a lot of sellers not aware of ACOS, that is, uh, sorry, I'm, I might repeat in myself, but it's so big and so few sellers really making attention to it that uh, I will take the risk and repeat myself. Uh, the ACOS that everybody is uh, trying to optimize and looking for and that is reported on Amazon is not an ACOS uh, same SKU uh, sponsored sales. Just if you need to keep in mind something from this presentation is you sponsor a product, there will be a sale on another product, not the, the product that has been sponsored. It will uh, come up in your ACOS computation and you, you will see it as a sponsored sales on the advertising console. When you keep this in mind, I'm pretty sure you will have and will take uh, better uh, decisions and make uh, different actions because you will be uh, looking at numbers differently and analyzing them uh, differently. And in my opinion, it's uh, super important. And to give you one last example to show why it's important, I, I, I saw in the past 
um, a brand that has a product with two variations. One, one variation that is selling super well and one that is not selling well. It's a, a color variation. And this brand wanted to get rid of uh, the bad color variation. So they just started pushing hard on PPC on this variation and they stopped promoting the best selling variation. So if you are not aware of what I, I was describing, you will see super good numbers and you will be happy with what's happening because you will see that you are uh, spending money on PPC. You will see sponsored sales happening. You will see a low ACOS. And in fact, you are not solving your problem of getting rid of the bad variation inventory because you push hard the bad uh, variation. Sales people end up buying the other color variation. Your stack, stock level of the other variation is lowering and the bad variation is still there. And you were uh, spending money and thinking that uh, your strategy was uh, working. I'm pretty sure that the end, end of the day of the week, you will figure out that there is something weird happening there, seeing some good PPC numbers and at the same time, your stock is not uh, moving. But it was a very good, it, it's a, a good simple example to show why it's important to have this in mind. Definitely. That's a really good example from real life because I think a lot of sellers have uh, either color or size or taste variations. And yeah, it exactly. could really happen because if they don't pay attention to all the data and all the details, they not even might notice this inventory level thing uh, as a first thing. So that's really cool. So if anybody has any questions to you regarding this topic or other PPC topics, then uh, what is the best way to reach out to you and perhaps also to learn more about your PPC company? So yes, uh, I would be happy to uh, talk and answer all your questions if you have uh, any. The best way to reach to me is uh, by email at uh, uh, Tariq, T-A-R-I-K, at m19.com. Uh, and please uh, feel free to reach to have any, uh, like if you want more information or about uh, our company or about the topic we were discussing before, uh, I'm always happy to, uh, to, to, to discuss on or even jump uh, in a quick uh, call with you. Thank you so much and see you next time. You're welcome. Thanks. I hope this video about Amazon attribution was useful for you and if you would like to learn more about M19 software you will find the link below in the description check them out see how they do it's a software created in France in Europe and now I would like to invite you to watch other video with Tarek where he's explaining how to stop uh, keyword and product targeting overlap for the same Amazon advertising placements.